Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. This is Professor Diaz, and I wanted to go over arrays and for loops and conditional statements before we move on to the next section. So this is just practice, but again, practice makes perfect, so we're going to take the time to do this. So the first thing that I want to show you is how to create an array in C++. So that's not too hard to do. Let's go ahead and define what type of array it's going to be first. So in this case, we wanted to make an array of integers. So we're going to say int. And then um, because this is a practice, I'm going to say my array. Uh, but when you're actually doing these in practice, you want to name the array something that's descriptive of what's being stored inside. In this case, we're just doing a little practice. So we're going to call this one my array. And inside the square brackets, we need to define what size this array is going to be. Because in C++, you have to, you have to declare what type of array it's going to be. And you have to declare um, what size it's going to be first. So I'm going to create a constant, const int array size. Oh, I should capitalize that. And I'm going to set that equal to 5. And so that I can change the size of the array from here. So inside, I'm going to say array size. There we go. OK. So uh, after that, I want to define how I want to define the elements of the array. So I'm going to start with curly braces. And we're just going to say 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And this will do it for, for our practice array. So 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So we're storing integers here. And I want us to, I want to do something with the numbers uh, so that we get some kind of uh, example of practical use for these. So I'm going to create an integer for the user number. And we're just going to set that as a declaration for now. We're not going to assign it anything yet. We're just going to introduce it. And we want to get the user input. So C out, enter a number, um, handle, and line, C in, user none. All right, simple enough. OK. So for calculations, I wanted to show you how to loop through the array. And in this way, you'll be getting a practice on for loops and looping through arrays. So we're going to kill two birds with one stone. OK, so four, you start with four, and then you create your counter variable. So I'm going to say for int i equal to 0, and then a semicolon, uh, semicolon after that, and then i less than array size. Oh, man. I keep trying to um, auto tab to array size, and uh, it doesn't work 100% of the time. So that's why I keep messing that up. Array size. And then we want to increment i by 1. We want to use it and then increment i by 1 each time. So that's why we're going to use post increment out, we want to output what element is located at that index. So we're going to say element, uh, and then we'll say i, and then we'll say my array i. OK, let me grab a drink here. OK, and we did acquire a user number. So I'm going to uh, do something with that. And we're going to say my array i equals my array i times the user number. So in this way, we're practicing how to change the uh, elements that are within the array. So we can't add things to this. We can't increase the size of this array. Um, but we can, however, change what the elements are within the array. And so this is how we would do it. You would take 
the index, you would take the array and then its index that you want to change and set it equal to uh, whatever you want. It can, you could have an expression, you can have just a constant number. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you want to replace it to as long as it's the same type uh, as it was declared. And in this case, it's defined as an integer. And so you're going to, um, you're going to make sure that whatever you change it to is an integer. So same type. Okay. Um, and then for our output, we want to see out. Well, first let's see if this runs. Um, it's good practice to run your programs uh, early, early and make sure that there aren't any bugs. And so let's just go ahead and get in the habit of doing that. So I'm going to press the run button. Okay, and build succeeded. Great. So it says enter a number, and I want to choose a test number, so I'm going to choose a small number. I'm going to choose a 5 because this is easy to test in my head. And then we get 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Excellent. So element 0 is 10, element 1 is 20, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Uh, so I'm going to press enter. So it looks like our code's working already. Um, and like I said, you're going to want to get in the habit of running your code early, making sure that there aren't any bugs and making sure that changes that you've made didn't introduce bugs. Um, so that's what we're doing here. Now, we're going to change the, we're going to output the changed array because even though we outputted what was in the array, after that uh, statement, we changed what the value in uh, each index was, each index of the array. So we're going to see out, an end line because I just simply want a space and I want to make this readable. And we're going to create another for loop for int i equals zero, i less than array size, i plus plus, post increment, and then curly brace. And then whatever I want to do in the for loop goes within the curly brace. In this case, I just want to see out the element. So I'm going to copy this line, and I'm going to paste it here. So this is all I want to do. And I'm going to say changed element. Uh, OK, I'm going to go ahead and run this now. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it takes uh, my computer is a little bit slow. It's not the best computer. Uh, I will admit that. But it gets the job done. So I'm going to enter a number. I'm going to choose small number, 5. And 5 times 10 is 50. 5 times 20 is 100. 5 times 30, 150, and so on and so forth. So this looks correct to me. Uh, we managed to create an array, output the contents of the array, and change the elements inside of the array. Uh, so from here, I want to move toward practicing uh, conditional statements. So we're going to have one more output. And we're going to say if, let's say if i is, oh, we start with if. Sorry, I was just starting to do it without even talking you through it. That was silly. If, and then inside the, uh, parentheses, we want to put what the condition is. And what I want to do is I want to say if something is an even number. So if the number is even, I want to output this is an even number. So I'm going to create a condition that will do that. So we will say if changed, if my array i mod two is zero. And then I'm going to create a curly brace. And within those curly braces, I'm going to tell it what to do. So if you find an even number, I want you to output this is, well, let's put it, let's see, let's put uh, this is an even number. So we would be it would be even Stevens. And then I'm going to create an end line here. All right. So this is the conditional statement. So if my array at that, at that index, if the element inside is 
even, that's what this mod two is doing, then we're going to see out this is an even number. So let's go ahead and run it again. We made a small change and we're going to test it again and see if that change invited any uh, bugs or if it works correctly. So enter a number, a small number of five. All right, and perfect. So every time we got an even number um, because, because we're uh, multiplying uh, simply by the five and that gives us this result. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Well, one more thing. Um, if I wanted to create a 2D array, the way I would change this, or the way I would do that would be to int my 2D array, and then we'll say that this is array size, so the, the five, the global constant of five, by array size. So we're going to make this a square uh, matrix. Array size, array size. And then you create curly braces. And then you do another set of curly braces. And in here you put, uh, this is one element. This whole list is going to be an element, this, this whole subarray. And I'm just going to say one, two, three, four, five. One, two, well, I'll do it five times. So let me just copy this. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, that looks good to me. Uh, one moment, getting rid of a comma here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I almost forgot to put a semicolon. Um, anyway, so this is our new 2D array. And if we want to loop through the 2D array, it's similar to how we loop through the 1D array with the addition of another for loop. So we use a nested for loop. So let me get rid of some of this stuff uh, so that we can simply loop through. Um, we can put the focus on looping through the um, 2D array. Uh, Get rid of this thing, doesn't belong here. Okay, so to do this, we would say for not in capitals, no, not not capitalized like I was doing, for in i equal to zero, i less than array size, i plus plus, curly brace, and then another for loop for, and, and typically people just kind of use j here. Um, unless you're doing uh, some sort of thing that's specific to matrices, then you want to say for row uh, or for column. So instead, this would be for row. And this this maybe is a little bit easier to understand. So let's let's go ahead and do this. So row, and then we'll say column. And call equal to zero call less than array size, call plus plus. And then we create another curly brace. So we're a loop inside of a loop, thus creating the nested loop. And I'm going to output uh, the element at these locations. So I'm going to say C out. Is and then I'm going to say my 2D array, and then we're going to say row, and we're going to say column, and we're going to add an end, end line to each of these end lines. So I'm going to run this so we can see what it results in. And it's going to take a second, but it's running. Okay. So the element is one, two, three, four, five. So it's going through each one of these elements inside of the subarrays. So that's how to loop through a, uh, that's how to create a nested for loop and create a 2D array and create a 1D array and work on conditional statements. So I hope this lesson was helpful for you and now your memory is jogged and you're ready for the next thing. Um, thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful day.